Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. And the purpose of our organization is to help design a better world. This is our weekly video update number 25 covering all of our progress for last week which was the week of July 12th, 2000, July, August 12th, 2013. Um, and as is the format for these uh, video blogs, what I'm going to do is I'll go over briefly just a bullet point of everything that we've accomplished in the last week and then I'm going to go into detail on some of these and as all of these blogs are meant to be standalone blogs uh, if you listen to all of our blogs you might hear a little bit of repetitive information about our purpose and why our organization is doing everything that we're doing to help design a new world um, but hopefully it's still interesting so without further ado let's jump right into it uh, this last week was a huge huge uh, week for food infrastructure. We got a ton accomplished in the food infrastructure department. More specifically, the large-scale aquapini planting details are all up on the website and complete. We've got Zenapini 1 and Zenapini 2 planting maps are now up on the website and complete as well. Uh, we did production calculations for everything, for all the houses. So the only thing that's missing is the hoop houses. We've done the production calculations for that too. I thought I was going to get that done last week. Looks like I'm going to get that done this week. So, but all of our large structures have been calculated out and all the details are done for those. Uh, we've updated our highest good food page with a little bit more details about what the food uh, situation is going to look like and diversity is going to look like on the property, answering questions like, is one community a vegetarian culture, um, things like that. And then uh, we've started the purchase order research for all uh, six of the food structures. So the purchase order details means what, where you would go to buy all of the amazing plants that you can see on the website. And like I said, large-scale acapini would be the first place, the best place to go and take a look at that. And the tropical atrium plants are all edited behind the scenes. Thought this was done last week. Now it's done. And we got one more final edit, and then we'll start putting them up on the website. I'm not sure how long that's going to take. But as I said, when it is up, when the final versions of all this stuff are up on the website, I will gladly do the happy dance on the video blog. But that's not this week. So additionally, we've got the Earthbag Village calculations are done, so we'll start putting those up on the website this week. Um, Sago Center appliances are being put in in 3D, which is exciting, and um, there's some other behind-the-scenes stuff that I'll talk about afterwards. Um, we've updated all of our partner pages, and we updated our purpose, values, and mission page to simplify that page, created an additional breakout page, which is our um, foundational beliefs page. So if you want to check that out, as always, there's a written blog that goes along with all this. It has pictures of all this stuff that I'm talking about, and then links to as much information as you can handle on our website. So you can always find that in the YouTube description. And then last but not least, uh, we've added a monthly donation option to the website as well. Per the request of some folks that have given us some great donations, they said, hey, you should have a, week, a monthly donation option. And so now we're happy to say that we do indeed have a monthly PayPal donation option for one community. That's our progress for the last week. So um, lots of cool things. Let me go into the details of all of this stuff and what we accomplished because it really really is extensive uh, in the food infrastructure department getting the large scale aquapini done is a huge deal it's truly an example of what our open source project launch blueprinting is all about and so what we've got if you go to the website now you can see that we've listed every single plant out why we chose to why we chose that plant why we chose to put that plant where we chose to put that plant within this structure why, uh, what the cultural considerations are and what the planting guidelines are for every single plant with a picture and a description, all those details. And then in addition to that, you got a planting map that will show you where all those plants go within that structure. And then we've also got the projections, the five-year projections for what you, we can expect to produce. And there's even a link to the spreadsheet with huge details. To create those projections, we said, well, you know, what's our low expectation and what's our high expectation? Then we took the average of that and we did that for every single plant. And we're doing the same thing now in creating the, um, the purchase order for this. So our botanist, Michael, is going through the process of identifying where to get every single one of these plants, which 
in many cases the plants are endangered um, or, or extinct, in some cases extinct in the wild. And so these rare plants, these endangered plants, we want to show people if you wanted to buy just one of these plants where you could get that. And so we're going through the process of doing all that work and once that's all done then we're going to get into more details of the structure itself and uh, continue focusing on the 3D aspects of that and get that up so you can look at the large-scale aquapenia in 3D and rotate that around and see exactly how the heating and cooling works, see how the water catchment works, and all those details are things that we've been working on for a long time. So um, very excited to have that done. And then in addition, you know, we're doing this for each one of the houses. So we also did it for the Zenopini 1 house. We now have the uh, planting map is up, and all the plant details are done behind the scenes. They just need to be put on the website. And so if you go to that same page, uh, our highest good food infrastructure and then what we'll be planting and harvesting page you'll see you can see the Zenopini one and two maps or sorry if you go to the written blog which the descriptions in the YouTube description the link rather then you can see uh, the Zenopini one Zenopini two maps and click on those and go to the details page and see uh, all the stuff that I'm talking about and so we've got those two maps completed and now we're in the process of starting to move over all the plants over right now we just have a list of everything that's going to be planted but you actually can click on the Google Doc and if you want to see the unedited list the raw data with all the pictures and everything in there a lot of which have not been resized and are not ready for the website we've got all that up um, on the page right now and then as we complete that stuff we delete it off of the Google Doc which is open source and we put it on the website and then once the Google Doc is done we delete the link because it's no longer necessary because we have a finished product and so phenomenal examples of open source project launch blueprinting everything that we're purposed to do so that's done we also got the production calculations done for everything and these food structures are not meant in the large-scale aquapenia is meant to produce large-scale volume and wallapini 3 is meant to produce large-scale volume but the all the other food structures are educational structures and they're meant to produce maximum diversity so a lot of supplemental foods and things that people have never even heard of to add to the foundations of the diet that will be grown in uh, food forest as well as just traditional outdoor growing with hoop houses and things like that really following uh, ecological principles for gardening and natural growing in the soil and so uh, if you just that's why the food structures are so diverse and why we're putting so much time and energy in showing what it is that we're going to grow because we're going to demonstrate six unique different internal environments for each of these structures so that people anywhere in the world can duplicate one of these structures and duplicate pretty much any environment that they want within the structures and so open sourcing that is something that we see as really really um, supporting global food sustainability because people could take the designs that we're creating and they could set up whatever internal environment they want and then they can maximize that environment with their own food choices something maybe less diverse than what it is that we're choosing but way more high productivity options and then hopefully those folks will open source share that with us so that we can continue to put that information out grow the open source archive so um, additionally I said we got uh, we redid our highest good food page and so uh, a lot of people ask is one community going to be a vegetarian community it is not um, as part of our highest good philosophy we really support food diversity and so on our team we have vegans we have vegetarians and we have omnivores um, we also, as part of that highest good philosophy, are committed to only the ethical treatment and raising of animals. And so with that in mind, um, well, the details are on the page. You can take a look at it. With that in mind, you know, we're, we're raising, uh, we're, the intent is for chickens and goats and rabbits to begin with and to see exactly what the resource needs and time needs are for those and to demonstrate real ethical animal husbandry um, as part of one community. And so all those details are now up on the highest good food page, which has been updated. And uh, I said that we are starting the purchase order research. I already talked about that. And the tropical atrium continues to chug along at, uh, at actually hugely fast. It's getting done really, really quick. It's just a ridiculous amount of information. The tropical atrium is, um, is going to be pretty amazing food production and just beautiful facility. And so we want to get it right. And so the basics are up on the website right now, but behind the scene, we are putting the finishing touches on it. And as soon as we got it done behind the scenes, it's ready to be transferred over to the website, and that should go really quickly. And I would love 
to believe that I'm going to be doing the happy dance next week. We will see. Um, additionally, we've got the Earthbag Village calculations are done for all of the Earthbag homes. So we want to demonstrate that you could build a home if you want to do it real basically uh, without, without, or real basically, without too many bells and whistles. Um, you could build a home like a guest home or just a small residence for under $2,000. We're doing some pretty beautiful residences, and it looks like they're coming out to about $5,000, and we haven't gotten into the process of really bringing those prices down yet through networking and affiliations and things like that. But we have done all the calculations and finished up that, yes, you could build one of these Earth Dome homes, that we're, and we're going to build 67 of them as part of the Earth Bag, as the Earth Bag Village. You could build them for under, for about $5,000. It comes out to about $5,000 per structure. So, which is great. We're right on track so far with our budgeting for the Earthbag Village, which is the whole point of that village, is to demonstrate that you could build, uh, in our case, we're going to build 67, res well, housing for about 100 people, including a food structure in the center, which is a tropical atrium, uh, and communal showers and communal bathrooms, all of that for under the cost of a couple houses in California. So that's what we're shooting for. And the target that we've got right now is about $300,000, for housing for 100 people. We're confident, really confident that we could do that. That does not include the energy infrastructure. The energy infrastructure is extremely, that's, that's a big chunk of the cost, but the housing itself, um, we're pretty confident we're gonna be able to successfully demonstrate that we can build that and the tropical atrium for under $300,000. And then in the process of actually building it and establishing the network and everybody that's necessary to make that come together as far as the materials providers and technology, all the different details, uh, we think that we could bring that price down even more. And so um, that's our that's our project launch blueprinting process. You know, and this is how we're designing a better world. This is the idea of what we're doing. And so we want to really demonstrate the Earthbag Village as maximally affordable sustainability. And if you're interested in that, go to our website and just take a look at the Earthbag Village. Go to Highest Good Housing and then click on the different models there and you can see what's going on with that. So that's exciting to be moving forward on that. Um, Sago Center appliances are now being put in. I mentioned um, we also found out that we need to have uh, windows, specific windows for um, for fire escape and those kinds of details. And so behind the scenes, we're now working on that. We need to add in dormer windows. I'm not uh, I'm not a general contractor, so this is not a language that I'm I'm just now learning how to speak. So we need dormer windows on the domes to be able to put in windows for egress that will be large enough for a person to be able to get out of those windows if necessary. And we were thinking we were going to be able to do smaller windows and sliders because, uh, you know, the, the rooms themselves would be quite big and, and, um, and now we found out that we need to do larger windows and so those are some of the design elements that are happening. Um, behind the scenes we're starting to think about that and figure that out because we need to have uh, airflow. We want lots of nat natural airflow for um, passive heating and cooling for these entire, the Seiko Center Duplicable City Hub. And so in that process, with the dome homes, the, the windows that go in there that fill the triangles of these geodesic domes don't open. You have to have a special dormer window to be able to open those. And so that's what led us down this conversation and started talking to the county and finding out what the requirements are. And so now we're working on that behind the scenes. Um, but uh, what's happening right now is very exciting. We're continuing to put in the walls in 3D. We've put in the appliances, uh, a lot of the appliances in 3D. Hopefully we'll get the rest of the appliances in this week. And so the Sego Center Duplicable City Hub, hub continues to move forward really beautifully. Um, in addition to all that, uh, we have updated all of our partnership pages. So that's exciting. We've got all the detail where, you know, we're constantly seeking new partners uh, new consultants to the project, people that would like to donate their time to what it is that we're creating, to helping us design this better world, this idea, all these sustainability tools, and then the partners that join us, the people that come on board with our project, become the people that we would obviously refer to in the future and would be a natural choice for people that want to take our open source blueprints and evolve them to the next level because these folks have their hands in it and they've created the foundations of it. And so they're the most intimate with the information and probably the, uh, the best choices to be able to evolve these things further in a new direction. And so um, with all that is we're really seeking right now, we're specifically seeking structural engineers 
We are specifically seeking 3D uh, rendering folks that know how to use SketchUp and to, to continue to move all of our plans and everything that we have into 3D. And so with all that, we've updated all of our partnership pages. We've updated our compensation page, which is how um, we can benefit individuals that want to work with one community. That page is onecommunityglobal.org forward slash win if you want to check that out. And um, yeah, you know, as a group of all volunteers, we're 100% volunteers, we're a 100% unpaid group, including myself. Um, we're just doing this because our goal as a highest good for all organization is to create a world that works for everyone. And we really, really believe that that is possible. And so we're excited to be, to have updated those pages and to be putting that out there as we continue our search for people that like to help us create this and have some time and energy that they'd like to donate to what it is that we're doing and to work with our amazing team in creating uh, what people can use, open source blueprints that are usable by everyone. So, and then last but not least, uh, we have a monthly donations option now that's up on the website. So if you want to check that out, you can click on the bottom of almost every single page. The website says contribute, join, and partner. And so that will link you to our partnership page, our contribution page, as well as our joining page for getting involved as either a satellite pioneer, the new option I talked about last week, or as a pioneer member, one of the folks that will be moving onto the property with us and helping us build all one community. And so um, now on our donations page, we have a monthly donations option, which is very exciting for people that just would like to give 5 or $10 a month and just set that up as an automated uh, donation through PayPal. We now have that option available. And as always, we are, of course, uh, seeking anyone. If anybody knows anybody that would like to invest in one community, the number one thing that could help us right now would be to get the property that we have put uh, almost three years of work into now establishing the relationships and building our business plan around and all the details necessary to be able to share one community as an ecotourism resort, as an open source village model, as a destination for people to learn about this lifestyle, to learn about what it is that we're creating and then to be able to take everything out and build it and duplicate it for themselves. You know, to be able to start this creation of ours the property that is perfect for that, and all those details are on the website. Um, the number one thing that could help us right now would be if somebody would like to invest in one community and help us get that property up to market. If we could do that, we could market that location, we could pay back that loan. If somebody were willing to do that or if they wanted to donate to our 501c3, that would help a ton because then we could focus our efforts on getting the rest of the funding for all of our infrastructure and we'd take this whole, everything that we're doing, all these details, and start actually building it and take our open source creation and multiply that exponentially, hugely exponentially. You know, be doing several video blogs a day, not me, but all the team and the diversity people and then putting out, you know, video tutorials on every aspect of our infrastructure, showing people exactly how to do it and to be able to see the details of there and then include with that written out details and full spreads of how to duplicate every component of one community as either a complete sustainable and self-sufficient village model and ecotourism resort that will further expose people to the idea and help it duplicate even more or as individual components <clears throat> just the different pieces of one community that people could be applying in their own lives in their backyards you know on a small scale whatever piece it is everything from the food infrastructure to natural swimming pool design to the open source education program or to nonprofit and for-profit business models all of these different components to the energy infrastructure, the housing in infrastructure doesn't have to be a complete village, it could just be a guest home. All of these details are being designed specifically for duplication, resource-based economy impl implementation, self-governance model, all this stuff that's on our website, the botanical garden, open source botanical garden model, all of this can be duplicated either individually or as complete teacher demonstration open source hubs like one community. And so um, if anybody has connections and wants to help us out and pass our project along, I say this every single time, it's super helpful just liking our pages. Just going to our website and flipping through the pages and the ones that you think are especially um, beautiful and something that you really agree with, just sharing that on Facebook or liking it is really helpful. I mean, you never know who you know. And more importantly, you know, it shows a public interest in what we're doing. And we look at those to see what people are most interested in, what people like the most. 
our food infrastructure page has gotten tons of love from the public. And so we're putting a lot of time and energy into that because that's what we know that people really like seeing the most. And so, you know, we can focus our energy on all these different pieces. And so we choose to focus on the things that people like the most. So if there's things, if you'd like to help influence the direction of one community, if you'd like to just support us, sharing our project, liking our pages, uh, especially sharing and liking our investor pages. If you go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash funding, um, that page is a great place to see the details of what we're looking for for funding and how people can help. And, uh, but liking and sharing any of our pages is very helpful. And then of course, always, we appreciate all the gratitude, all the kind words, the emails and everything that people send. Super, super helpful. As always, if you'd like to partner with us, if you'd like to uh, become a consultant with our project, uh, fill out our very short partnership form and we can set up a time to talk and see if it looks like it's a good fit uh, how we can work together and make this whole designing of a better world happen even faster so with that pretty short for me for these blogs uh, i hope it was interesting as always check out the written blog if you'd like to see images and links to all the details of everything i'm talking about and um until next week thanks for following our project uh, huge love from one community and uh much gratitude for all the support that everybody's always showing us. So thank you.